Dual screen windows devices. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In this one we will try to restore some dual screen windows laptops from Toshiba. So let's get started. In late 2023 I purchased this Surface Duo and explored its capability running Windows 11 in a video. During that time I briefly mentioned older Windows dual screen devices from Acer and Toshiba. Intrigued by their unique form factor, I later acquired this Acer Iconia at auction. A few months later, I stumbled upon a broken Libretto W100 and found another one a bit later. And as any reasonable adult would do, I bought both as well, thinking of turning two broken ones into a working one. So that's how we got here. Yes, I might have a problem. The Acer will come back in a future video, but for now, back to the W100s. While I clean the W100, let's give you a rundown of the specs. The two notebooks in question are the Toshiba Libretto W100, released in 2010. It features a U5400 dual-core Pentium running at 1.2 GHz. So yes, we finally have a device with a 64-bit CPU on this channel. The RAM is also more than usual around here, with two whole gigabytes. <laughs> Accompanied by 64 gigabytes of SSD storage, with Windows 7 pre-installed. And the cool thing, of course, are the two 7-inch touchscreens here with a resolution of 1024 by 600. If you want to have a more in-depth look about the W100, I recommend the just-released video uh, on them by LGR. Great video, great channel, always recommend it. So back to my W100s. I also got some accessories with one of them. So let's see what I got. So this is the box. And look what it advertises. Office 2010. You're protected by McAfee. You should use Bing, Skype and eBay. <laughs> but here it states that this is the 25 year anniversary of the Toshiba Libretto line. And we can see some cool screenshots how the UI should look if the devices are actually working. Let's see what we have on the inside. Nothing. Okay, so that means we don't have the drivers because from one of the devices I know that uh, they tried to reinstall Windows and uh, apparently failed at that. So yeah, I don't really know what to do now. I have the charger uh, for from the other one. So <laughs> um, in the end, I actually have uh, all the accessories I need but let's see if I find something online. So I found an image of a recovery stick online, but first I have to check if the hardware is actually fine. So which device are we going to try first and see what is actually wrong with them? Uh, one of them has a really expanded battery. It's this one. Uh, I think I will remove the battery and we are going to try the notebook without battery. Okay, Toshiba leading innovation. I really hope you can see the screen. I'm sorry, they are so super reflective. Let's see what operating systems they boot. I actually forgot which one is which. Uh, one of them should boot into a uh, Windows. Okay, and it turned off. Um, not really a good sign and it rebooted. Ah, but uh, okay. Well, we are apparently booting into Windows. Windows 7 Home Premium, which is what these devices were uh, originally running. <laughs> and um, yeah, we don't have a license for it apparently. Okay, hey, but touch screen and speaker are working. Arrow is not working. And the fan is I'm pretty sure you're gonna hear the fan on the recording all the time. The fan is really loud. Also, the flickering that you can see here isn't happening uh, in reality here. Okay, let's see. Huh? The touchscreen here is controlling the, the, the cursor over there. That is weird. But I mean, that's a software 
thing I would suggest. So it looks like the hardware is actually working on this one. So uh, the screen is, is it's so small. No, I don't want to open Internet Explorer, please. Let's shut it down and test the other one. It turns on at least. Okay, it rebooted again, but there also seems to be a Windows installed. Ah, oh, this is <laughs> this apparently uh, is the down arrow. So is this enter? It is. So these keys usually are to show the keyboard under Windows and I think to go to some sort of home screen. But there also seems to be a Windows installed here. Let's have a look if it's uh, as borked as the other one. <laughs> it's also not activated. And touch is not working. So why do I have the feeling that people try to restore these devices and uh, end up removing the software from the hard drive and can't get it back on there? So I think this is going to be the candidate for another video because one of them I want to restore to Windows, of course, but the other one I want to try out other operating systems like Linux, for example. So let's uh, shut this one down and try to reinstall Windows on the other one. Okay, so now I booted a Linux distro to get an image of the internal hard drive and save it to a USB stick. So even if I mess up the installation completely, I can go back to the current state if I need to. Okay, so now I've got the recovery onto this USB stick. Let's see if we can actually get this working again. So let's see. You have to press the keyboard button here multiple times to get to the boot menu. Yeah, as we can see, that worked. Here we can see USB memory, my USB stick, enter is on the right side here. And let's see if we can get this restored. I've connected a USB hub here because uh, it only has one USB port and I also would like to have a mouse and keyboard connected here. And the fan kicked in, typical for these UMPCs. <laughs> okay, let's select a language. I really hope you can somewhat see it. I can't really get the image clearer, sadly, because the screen is so reflective. Okay, it tells us a warning that all data will be deleted. We say yes. Yes, we want to go back to the condition the device was delivered in. Yes, I know that I'm going to lose data. I don't care. Looks like it's uh, running. So I'll see you when it's done. Hey, the second screen turned on and it's rebooting one last time. Okay, so we're back. After rebooting legitimately like 20 times over the course of over an hour, it's rebooting one last time. I just made it through the setup and we're now ready to boot Windows for the first time here. Yes, we are finally in Windows. Okay, so now that we're finally in Windows, I really want to see and experience all of the touch-centric features on the second screen that are proprietary to the W100. So it looks like here we have like a bulletin board thing. Let's see how to interact with it. Okay. I really, ooh, it actually has a vibration motor in it, which is something I think I've never seen in a notebook or even a UMPC. So here we have a trackpad mode, which means we can control the trackpad, uh, the cursor on the top screen here and that actually that actually works really well to be honest clicking uh, also activates the vibration motor as you might have heard right now that's really cool how about the keyboard okay so this is this is a touch keyboard on a 2010 device ah i can't even talk anymore this is so cool this is so cool. I finally get to experience this device. So where's the where's the Windows key? There is no Windows key. Okay, let's let's open Notepad. 
Okay. Uh, I don't know why it closed the search again. And again. Oh no. It looks like there are, there are ghost touches on the screen here. I actually have the same problem with the um, Acer Iconia. It also has ghost touches. I don't know if it's just old touch screen technology or what, but it's really annoying. Okay, now I don't know why, but now it's working. Okay. I mean, it does work. I would need to test it in a more ergonomic position than right now, but it actually seems to be working. What I really want to know is how is it possible to press two keys at once? No, no, it's not. So gaming uh, is probably not going to work on here, but I'm going to test that. Okay, what else do we have here? Uh, magnification mode. That zooms... Ah, that zooms in. Okay, so it's just the uh, Windows magnification. Interesting. Can I close that? Yes. What do we have here? Oh no, it's still in the magnification mode. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, here we have uh, toggles for like locking the screen and brightness and um, turning on and off the wireless modem and stuff like that. What is this? Ah, open windows, okay. Can I close the editor from here? Yes, I can, okay, cool. And we have volume, I think. <laughs> In huge buttons here. And what else do we have here? This might open a file explorer. But I can't see it. Did it open the file explorer in the, underneath the keyboard? No. Ah, it is a file browser, but it is a file browser specifically on the second screen. That's also interesting. Can I launch games from here? I really love how there's Amazon and eBay and McAfee and Skype already pre-installed. As if anyone would actually want that. Let's go to games and what do we have here? I don't know. Let's play Minesweeper. Yay, I lost. Okay, that was quick. But yeah, okay, so. Actually, the touch features are quite cool, but to be honest, I'm not sure if I would ever use them. <laughs> um, what do we have under gadgets here? Okay, so this is just like a widget pane here. Just like the sidebar, but in a bit bigger. So I can have a clock here. Oh, it also has a camera, right. What is this? Is it taking a picture or... Oh no, it's just opening the camera application. Hi. So yeah, I, th I really think we should try a game on here. Let me install something and I'll see you then. Okay, so I now try to install some software on here. And to be honest, it didn't really work out that great. Most software that runs in full screen just crashes instantly. Even when I set the screens to just duplicate and close all of the apps here. And generally, the system, while it is faster than, for example, the Intel Atom in here, uh, it's still very slow. It did manage to show a YouTube video quite well, but that's about it. Okay, so after many hours of tinkering, the only game I got running is GTA San Andreas. Not even my typical go-to games for low-end hardware like Force Story or Need for Speed 2SE worked. And no, it can't run Crisis even after installing all of the Windows and driver updates. Sadly, I have to start a new game, of course, because I don't have any save games on here. Oh yeah, that beat. One of my favorite games of all time. 
Let's skip the intro. Okay, mouse works. Yeah, but that's what I what I tried to tell you. So I have a uh, wireless keyboard uh, behind the camera. I'm pressing all the right buttons, nothing happens. If I use the on-screen keyboard, is what? They also don't really do what I want them to do. I mean, let's be honest, uh, it runs. I don't think the, the performance is really the issue here. The issue is just the weird form factor and software. I don't really know why, but most games really hate this device. I don't know if it's a driver thing or if it's just because of the form factor and software. But yeah, I mean, I can't really do anything. So. I guess, as sad as it is, I guess that's it. Okay, so I really like this device, but it has many drawbacks. It's slow, it's loud, the touch screen, while it is cool, it's not working that well actually. And you have to keep in mind how expensive this was. Apparently, this specific version sold for 1,300 euro, as this was the um, cellular version. At the same time, you could buy an Acer Aspire 1, like this one, also featuring cellular connectivity, for a fourth of the price. I mean, to be honest, it's a bit bigger and uh, the CPU is way worse, it's an uh, Intel Atom. But you have a slightly larger display and a way better experience with keyboard and uh, trackpad. But yeah, we're not here uh, for rational devices. Um, this is just a completely bonkers device and that's why I absolutely love it. And I'm also really impressed how many features they managed to cram into the second touch screen. Okay, so enough of the rambling. If you want to see more shenanigans like this, for example, a comparison between all of the different uh, dual screen devices that I now own, or maybe what alternative operating systems I've planned for this guy here, consider subscribing and I'll see you next time.